I would like to address the differences between DACs, DACs that we are using in audio interfaces and other pro audio things like mixers, and hi-fi DACs, DACs that are used by audio files. And what benefit could we get if we have a high-end real audio file DAC versus the regular ones that we have in our audio interfaces? And maybe we could also look into the different interesting connections that uh, Hi-Fi Audio DACs have. In these days, most of the DACs are a DAC on a chip. And they have quite good specs. They have low noise levels, low distortions, and they are implemented in various places. Uh, sometimes in budget solutions, sometimes in quite high-end solutions. For example, you can hear how people are raving about the Focusrite uh, audio interfaces, which also are based on these, uh, let's say, Sigma Alpha DACs, right? So if this is enough to make music, why would you need something better to reproduce it? I mean, a lot of music producers, mixers, and mastering engineers mention their expensive converters, like the Dangerous Music Convert tool. They mention how you can clip the analog signal back into the digital domain in a clean and pleasant way. But they don't uh, mention the things that audiophiles mention when they speak about DACs. So there could be a lot more to a DAC than that. There are these things in some DACs that help audiophiles to achieve realism of this music being played live in front of them, while audio professionals are more concerned about how to shape these sounds and how it will sound on different sound systems. It used to be that a high-end DAC or sound card for a computer was something with low crosstalk or channel bleed. This is where uh, one channel picks up a bit of the sound of the other one. It had support for 24-bit uh, depth or higher, and it supported 192 or higher sampler rate. But often people who sell computer gear compare these cards and wrote them off as uh, probably snake oil or they didn't hear the difference between a better sound card or maybe a slightly worse sound card. So they thought that uh, this will not make a difference for most people. And of course, to hear the difference, you need to know what to listen for. And you need to have a revealing audio system for such things. For example, if you play music loudly in more quiet places, you will hear the difference between 16 and 24 bits and the difference between 44.1 and 192 kilohertz could be heard in the transients of music and sometimes it could even make the sound stage the width the stereo image of music slightly wider or more different more vivid maybe so to describe the sound differences of high-end DACs, audiophiles, use words that might sound abstract and imagined to engineers who are working with pro audio. So some of the words that are used are soundstage, depth, realism, smoothness, pitch dark, black background, finesse, and things like that. So the most expensive DACs, 2K to 10K range, like Denfrips Terminators and PS Audio Direct Stream DACs and things like that, mostly excel in high dynamic range. It gives the realism, which is very hard to achieve in audio. Actually, Denfrips Terminator, the original one, is even considered to be a budget option for the sound it gives. So high dynamic range, why it is so important. If someone will play real drums right in front of you, and then we will exchange that with good speaker system, you will probably notice that you are listening to speakers because it's very hard to replicate these fast expressive changes in the air pressure. And especially for this purpose, Audiophiles use this so-called 
DSD format, which is a digital format without strictly limiting dynamic range like we have in PCM, because it's a stream of one bit, and each bit says whether the air pressure, let's say, go up or down. And you just need many, many, many of them in order to sometimes draw the distance between two points in PCM world. And PCM is, of course, all of the wave, IVE, MP3s and everything else, which is, of course, easy to edit and easy to process. But DSD is hard to process, but it gives great results. But most of producers and musicians are working in limited dynamic space anyway. And we are thinking about how to squeeze sounds in limited spaces and control their dynamics and order them in some kind of a orderly fashion that is our design, which is our art. Now, one of these words audiophiles use, soundstage, largely refers to precision of audio reproduced in a stereo image. Audiophiles describe this as being able to distinguish recorded instruments location in a space. So difference between left and right channel must be very precise. Same goes for depth and ability to create accurate central image. And the dark uh, background is uh, simply a low noise floor in the signal. And audiophiles are replacing, let's say, power supplies with batteries to do so, shielding different components inside of their individual components. And resolution and sound stage relate to precision of clocks inside of DAC. Imprecise clocks make a particular distortion called jitter. It is phase distortion related to receiving bits a bit too early or a bit too late, basically in the wrong time. And people who know how to listen to these distortions reportedly are able to distinguish these imprecisions on 0.2 picoseconds, which is very tiny, but still the human ear apparently is capable to distinguish these minute differences. Audiophiles describe it as harshness in high frequencies, and you can often hear it in cheap Sigma Alpha decks and things like that. And you could compare the sound to a distortion without oversampling. By the way, the main DAC types are Sigma Alpha DACs, which are often the cheapest, and their sound quality are often dependent on analog stage, and you can find them in phones, because uh, there isn't enough space to put good components in. But there are also good examples of these Sigma Alpha DACs, which use a lot better amplifiers, like these small op amps that raise the signal that comes out of it till the line level and that of course is very important and a lot more interesting uh, DACs are these FPGA DACs which is programmable chips that can even change over time so you could receive an update and you suddenly have a new DAC that sounds even slightly differently and then for a truly high dynamic range there are resistor ladder DACs, R2R DACs, like the before-mentioned uh, uh, Denifrips terminators. These DACs simply have a lot of very precise, measured, hand-selected resistors, which resist electricity and allow it to be modulated. So these resistors are resisting the flow of electricity and they can be turned on and off and then you can get modulation, and therefore sound. And these DACs have a special separate computer that do all the decoding and processing and one of the most important things in these high-end DACs are clock. And there are very interesting clocks for these DACs. For example, the oven-controlled clocks and things like that. Which in some way leads us to the next thing, which is the inputs and outputs of DACs, high-end DACs. High-end DACs have some interesting connections that might seem confusing, like HDMI ports, Ethernet ports, and XLR ports for receiving digital information. And all of these inputs are related, again, to clocks. 
So in digital audio, it is not just that we read the correct bits and bytes and then we deliver them in correct time. There are these clocks in DAX. Bit clock to have correct length of ones and zeros. Word clock for the 16 of these bits, 24 of these bits together. And then there is the master clock, which keeps everything in sync. In simple connections like SPDIF and TOSLINK, which is just one wire, let's say, all of this information with audio values are encoded and then it needs to be decoded, which takes additional time and is more complicated. But internally, hardware uses these things separately. For example, to connect a transport that reads CD to DAX, a connection called I2S is used and it is not standardized. So manufacturers use different or all of the ways how to transport this information from transport to DAC. Popular implementations are HDMI, which is high definition media interface, which is great for that and Ethernet. But if you don't like your DAX clock, you can use clock, which is in your transport. So you can see a great deal being played to precision of these clocks. While some engineers will hear things and think it must be snake oil. Something is not right because femtol clocks, they are precise even after a year. It will not deviate by part of a second. But as engineers of these decks have revealed that a lot of these clocks are not stable in a short time frame and they are somehow correcting their own mistakes to be correct in the long time frame, but in smaller time frame, these deviations are large enough for humans to be able to hear the difference. So basically, this is the main differences between high-end DACs and professional DACs. It's okay to produce music with professional DACs. Sure, there will be some more details that the audio file will hear that maybe you even didn't hear while you were making the music. But these high-end DACs are sure a thing that could be interesting to check out if you haven't heard one yet.